In today's video, I'll show you how I built this hand crank generator using a stepper motor to power some lights or even a cell phone in an emergency situation. Let's get started. Before we can build this hand crank generator, we're going to need to understand what comes out of the stepper motor when you turn the shaft to turn it into a generator. To do this, we're going to hook it up to my oscilloscope. As you can see, when the motor shaft is turned, we get a nice beautiful sine wave on the output. Well, we could use this to generate AC, DC is much more useful for applications such as charging a phone or running some LEDs, so we have to find a way to turn this AC into DC power. To do this, we're going to use something called a full bridge rectifier, or as Electroboom would say it, Do you need a full bridge rectifier? First, I came to a full bridge rectifier! A full bridge rectifier consists of four diodes in this configuration. Because the stepper motor outputs two phases, one phase on each coil, we're going to build two full bridge rectifiers, one to rectify each one of these sine waves into DC. Then we're going to combine both of these DC lines in series, run it through a 5 volt regulator to make sure we can't spin the motor too fast and send too high of a voltage to our LEDs or our phone, and add some large smoothing capacitors so we get a consistent 5 volts throughout the rotation of the motor. First off, the two full bridge rectifiers. You can see I have them wired up in the configuration that was shown before, and we just need to plug our stepper into this. Because the stepper motor has a female dew point connector on it, I made this little PCB so that I can just put the stepper motor connector on the PCB and then plug it directly into the breadboard. For this next part of the generator, we're going to be following this schematic. And I'm just going to wire each pair of wires or each coil to one of these full bridge rectifiers. Now we take the output of the first bridge rectifier and feed it to the negative of the second one. The second rectifier's output goes to the positive rail on this breadboard and the negative of this first rectifier goes to the negative rail of the breadboard. This circuit will work but it'll produce somewhat of a choppy waveform instead of the pure DC voltage that we want. So to solve this problem, we'll add some large smoothing capacitors to the output rails. Negative on the capacitor goes to the negative rail and the other side goes to the positive. This is already looking much better than it was before. There's just one small problem with this setup. If you turn the motor too fast, you'll send a really high voltage to the LED and it'll burn out. Or, in the worst case, if you have this hooked up to your phone, your phone will die. So to combat this, we can use something called a linear voltage regulator. This takes whatever voltage you feed into the input and gives you a stable 5 volts on the output. Input and ground for this linear regulator will go to the power rails, positive and negative, of the other breadboard. And on the output, when we turn the motor, we should have a stable 5 volts. Using a multimeter to confirm this, we can see that we get a stable 5 volts on the output. 4.99, close enough. Now our LEDs won't burn out and we won't have a dead phone. While our generator is technically finished, and we can use this 5 volts to power some LEDs or to power a cell phone in an emergency situation, this motor shaft is a little cumbersome to turn just with my hand and it's making it a little tired, not very easy to turn. So I'm gonna 3D print a crank that we can put on top of this so that we can turn it much more easily. It's 3D printing time. This crank took about 16 minutes to print and it was worth every minute of it. It's much easier to turn the motor shaft now. All I had to do was sand down this arm piece and sand a little bit on the inside of this piece and they slide pretty smoothly. I then hammered the arm onto the motor shaft and it's finished. Just be careful not to hit it too hard because if you do you can damage the motor but I was holding it by the shaft and tapping it pretty lightly so it should be okay for me. 
as you can see, this generator can power one light or you could hook up 10 to it and it would still work fine. And you can really see the caps at work when you stop cranking and the light still stays on for a while. This will keep the voltage stable if your cranks are inconsistent or you speed up or slow down during the, the crank instead of keeping it consistent. To hook this up to a phone charger or a power bank, anything that runs on USB, you would need to grab a USB cable and instead of hooking the output wires of the linear regulator to some LEDs like I did in this case, you would take them and hook them up to the USB power wires. Then when you crank the motor, your phone will start charging. This might be exhausting to do for a while, but if you're in an emergency situation and you need to call someone, you're lost and you have this, then it might come in handy. So that's it. I hope you liked the video and hopefully this can come in handy if you're in an emergency situation and have built one of these, or if you just want to play around with making your own electricity. This could be hooked up to a windmill or a water wheel to generate a small amount of electricity for off-grid electronics projects or anything else really. If you found this interesting, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video.